Hey guys, this is going to be a pretty long video. Uh, there should be chapters in the video where you can click. So if you look at the uh, seek bar where you usually fast forward to skip through the videos where you have boring parts that you really don't give a shit about. I'm going to provide that for you because this one's going to be pretty, pretty long. It's going to be like a moto vlog and a build breakdown uh, towards the end. Just a brief overview because I don't want the video to be ridiculously long. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to do that. If I can't figure out a way to get YouTube to put chapters in this video, check the description. In the description, I'll put timestamps of the different parts of the video. If you just want to sit here and listen to me ramble and uh, see a little bit of writing, then uh, feel free to watch it from start to finish. But uh, yeah, just keep a lookout for that in case you want to get to the parts that you really care about. So it was about this point uh, during the trip where I realized I had left my wallet at home. So no willies or burnouts or any hood rat shit like that today. Just gonna keep it low profile. like at least let me explain myself see what ha happened was So we're approaching the charging station. This one is free. So I felt obliged to stop here uh, to just fill up the bike before we head up the mountain. And uh, indeed we are going up the mountain. So, you know, better safe than sorry. I think the bike's at about maybe 82% right now. So definitely could have gone up the mountain, came down and went home without charging. But just for, you know, demonstration purposes, I stopped by, get some free power, and uh, just chilled out. I think the charge took about 10 minutes. A whole bunch of Teslas here. Usually get a lot of questions when I uh, pull up to popular charging stations. So I didn't want to hang around for too long. Um, but yeah, just gonna charge up real quick, top it off. Uh, you'll see the charge plug. I call it the zero butt plug that I integrated into the tailpiece of this motorcycle makes charging way more convenient than carrying a cable around with the bike or in my backpack. So you'll see my phone uh, is basically like the credit card for this. Uh, I'm, I didn't pay anything for this charging station. It's still free. It's just to uh, unlock the charger. They have them locked in there unless you have a membership. So the way charge point works, I really like them because they usually have the best prices, uh, cheapest prices, which is probably about 23 cents a kilowatt hour. And it usually takes about, I don't know, six to fill up my bike from zero. And I never use more than like five when I'm out in the streets because you never really drain it all the way to empty. So I never really pay more than two to two and a half dollars to fill my bike up. I usually pay less than a dollar. Uh, most charge points are at, around the nice areas are free. so. A lot of them you don't even pay. So we're charged up now. We're just going to head up to the mountain.
All right, so we're ascending Otai Mountain Truck Trail. We're about a quarter mile in. I think this mountain peaks around 4,400 to 5,600, about a mile up, depending on which of the offshoots you take. I'm not going too fast because uh, I'm obviously on street tires and uh, I'm not really out here trying to do anything crazy. I'm just trying to get to a spot where I can uh, safely fly my drone and also I'm here by myself. So don't want to take a turn too fast or hit a big rock and then slide off the side of the mountain. I think uh, I think that'd be a pretty interesting video for everyone watching. Quite a bit less interesting for me to edit whenever I get the feeling back in my arms, if I did. Since we're here and we got such a beautiful backdrop, I figured I'd just throw some voiceover in here, uh, give a little bit of my experience. I'm not a lifetime uh, motorcycle or dirt bike rider. Uh, I have been riding motorbikes of some sort for quite a few years, mostly electric. I've ridden a couple of dirt bikes, 250, 125, 450. I've uh, rode a 125 two-stroke. Um, so those are the dirt bikes I've ridden. I've ridden on the street, street legal motorcycles. Uh, let's start with the small ones. Uh, 300 sport bike, uh, 400 supermoto. That was my previous motorcycle. I've ridden uh, 650s, uh, street bikes. I've ridden 650 dual sports. I think it was a KLR. I've ridden Groms, I've ridden 600cc sport bikes. I uh, haven't ridden anything larger than a 650. Actually, uh, that's a lie. I demoed a Fat Bob, a Harley Fat Bob, a few years ago. Now, I think it was when it first dropped. That was a pretty interesting ride. But no 1000cc crotch rockets. I don't think I'd ever go over than a, uh, anything larger than a 600cc. And even if I got one of those, I probably wouldn't even ride it that much on the street. It'd probably be more of a track attack type bike. Okay, some background about Otay Mountain is uh, it is right at the Mexico border and there's been known to have immigrants cross uh, around this area. They choose to climb the mountain and, you know, get into the U.S. this way. I uh, just come across one of those people. What's up? San Diego. Diego? San Diego. That way. Yep. All right, man. Well, he might have been illegal. <laughs> so a couple of things made me uh, cautious about this approach. Uh, well, first of all, I was alone and he was alone here. So you'll see uh, as he waved me down, I proceeded quite a few feet away from him and uh, I didn't take my hand off the throttle the entire time just in case I had to get away. You never know who may or may not be a threat. Uh, also, the moment I notice him in the distance, I start looking around. Uh, that's to make sure there's no one behind me or anybody, you know, off the side of the cliff hiding around. Because you never know, man. You're up here and you're by yourself. <clears throat> but he was cool. Really young looking guy. If you're climbing a mile high mountain in 90 degree weather, to get away from whatever situation you were in. Shit, man, I'll tell you which direction the city's in. So we made it to the landing area. This is near the peak of Otai, not exactly the peak. And uh, I'll just throw in some of the drone footage from flying.
right, so here we are. I was at the top of Otai, but uh, guessing those towers are 5G because they were destroying my range. For a second, I was like, uh, damn. Waste all this money on this damn controller. <clears throat> I can't even go more than 500 feet. But it just turns out that those towers were probably 5G and my phone did have a full 5G signal. So it was interfering, but we got a nice little flight out here. I wanted to go all the way over the lake, but uh, messing around trying to figure out why I couldn't go too far at the top. Uh, killed my battery, so now we're down to the real test, which was figuring out if this incredibly affordable, huge ass battery pack could effectively charge my drone while I'm in the field. You guys aren't here for electric battery, I mean a battery bank review. You guys want to know what's going on with this bike. Uh, I'm sure as you've seen, um, I do have the J1772 or 1772 plug integrated into the tailpiece. I call this uh, the unofficial zero butt plug. It's already uh, weather sealed and it's got a nice little slow opening cap and that's hooked up to this uh, custom HK, oh is it, Elcon HKTC something charger. I'll throw a link in the description. <clears throat> this is a 3.3 kilowatt charger. Uh, it pulls 3.6 kilowatts from an electric charging station. Uh, that's important to note because not all power stations can provide that amount of power. And I have run into those where they were sub uh, 7 kilowatt power stations. Because enable for this to work, you also have to plug in the onboard charger, which gives you your charge enable signal, which would be available through these pins if I had opted for the CAN bus. But you can also do that with the Arduino board. Not sure if that's how you pronounce that, but you can do it with the Arduino board to charge uh, solely from this. But I, I really didn't feel like going through all the hassle with that after making the cables and uh, <clears throat> making the subframe for it. Uh, you can see that this is a pretty bumpy road coming up here. Uh, and the subframe's doing just fine. Still solid as a rock. Lift the bike up off of it. Um, I think that's the main thing that people had questions about. I'm not going to go into too, de too detailed a uh, description about this charging setup right now. I feel like that would be better done uh, at the desk where I can collect my thoughts. But uh, just killing some time while I'm charging this drone and decided to talk to you guys. Hopefully the audio is coming through okay. It's pretty windy up here. And I am talking through a helmet. <clears throat> I also have a sore, sore throat, so excuse me. Uh, what else? What else? I've got a whole notebook full of things that I've been writing down. I have not hit uh, 10,000 miles on the bike yet. I am at, let's see here, 9,334. Yeah, it's over 9,000. So I want to wait till I get to 10,000 miles. Uh, I think. I'm at my one and a half year mark right now. Um, I did have an accident, a work related accident where I broke my wrist, I had to get surgery. So I was out of commission for about six to seven months. Uh, so if you do a little bit of math, I'm just gonna do some random guesstimations here. I'm estimating that I would ride this bike approximately seven to 8,000 miles a year, which is above average for most uh, bikes and Pretty surprising for myself considering that this bike only has a 40 to 50 mile highway range now where that range comes from is ease of use and by ease of use I mean hopping on it turning it on and going and you can do that every day of the year 365 days cold hot uh, well maybe if it's too cold you won't be able to do that but if you live in a desert, I don't think heat's going to be too much of a problem. Unless you're, you know, flooring it on the highway, yeah, you'll overheat the motor and battery pretty quickly. I'll get into some of the issues with this bike. Not right now. That'll be another video. Sorry to break this up into... I'm not trying to do this for clicks or whatever. I don't get uh, money from my YouTube. I don't monetize my YouTube. I don't have any attention, so I'm monetizing my YouTube. 
but I feel like it would be better to break this up into multiple uh, videos. So you can choose and pick uh, what you're most interested in about the bike. I've got a surprising amount of interest uh, from posting videos about this bike. Uh, never intended to make this into a reoccurring series. I just like to do videos for fun and every now and then I'll throw a video in there for the motorcycle. But a lot of people are interested in the Zero, uh, especially with the new release of the FXE, uh, which I think is a fucking hoot. I think that's a hilarious release by Zero. Uh, not really proud of the company itself. Uh, and I don't think these bikes are anything revolutionary at all. That's also going to be another video uh, talking about the technology behind these bikes. Uh, I used to build nothing like this, obviously, because I'm not rich. As a college student, I used to build uh, electric bikes for other college students and sell it to them. Um, I had bikes that went 30 miles per hour. I had bikes that went 70 miles per hour. Don't tell the police. I'm pretty sure the statute of limitations is up anyway. Um, but through all of the bikes I've built, I think I've built maybe seven or eight different e-bikes from hot rods to off-roading, mid-drive, hub motor. Uh, I've messed with different types of controllers like Sabton, uh, Infineon. Uh, I've had Lion controllers, a dude that does custom Infineon controllers. I've been in the code. I've messed with all the different parameters. So I, I have a general uh, good idea of what's going on with this bike. And to wrap that all back in without being on a tangent, uh, this bike is nothing revolutionary. There's nothing super technically advanced about this bike. It's just an off-the-shelf Sevcon Gen 4 size 6 controller, 500 amps, running at 96 volts. It's a basic bitch-ass lithium pouch battery, the same one that you can have in an RC car or a drone. Uh, except, of course, it's uh, encased in, it's potted in epoxy, and it's a, uh, holy shit, a tarantula hop. Sorry, I just had a squirrel moment. Look at that. I hope that shows up on camera. Look at that guy. He's hunting, too. That also means if there's tarantula hawk, actually, I already know that, uh, where there's predators, there's prey. There are tarantulas on this mountain, and they are big. It looks like, a, it looks like my hand, giant black hand walking across <laughs> the sidewalk. And I'm pretty sure I was on my motorcycle when I saw it, and it still made my skin crawl and made me go to the far end of the controller. Uh, trail. Controller. Okay, that's what I was talking about anyway. So, controller. Uh, yeah, so nothing fancy there. The motor is custom. I have not seen anything like this. Um, so I'm, I'm certain they had this motor custom built, developed in the house, but that's not to say that someone else hasn't already, uh, caught up to them and did something. Cause it's just the, uh, it's just some magnets, stator and rotor dude. Uh, so motor energy, they have what is basically a clone of this. And they also have a water cooled version of it, uh, which brings us back into the heat issues. Um, also going to be another video. Uh, so I've covered the controller the motor, um, and the battery. So those are probably going to be three different videos. I'm going to try and keep them under five to ten minutes. And I'll explain in detail without trying to get too technical because I know that would bore a lot of people. Um, other mods, so a lot of people have questions about the mods. So uh, we'll start from the front and head to the back. So up front I have custom LED headlights. I put uh, little eyelids on there to make it look pissed off. I think that's cool. That wasn't just for show. A lot of things on here, minus the neon lights, of course, uh, have a function. So with these lights, they are basically too floody. So to keep from blinding oncoming traffic, I uh, took apart the lights and then I uh, put these. I don't even know where I got these, but they're like high temperature plastics on there because these are super bright. Um, and I slid them down until the flood looked acceptable. Oh, look, there's a trench. He doesn't care about me at all. Stop distracting me, bud. Um, yeah, so custom LED headlights because the lights they came with, I think they're halogen. Terrible. I hated them. Couldn't really see anything at night. I used to just ride around with the brights on all the time. And I also didn't like how only one of them lit up. So I have this set up now. Uh, I did a little playing around with the wires. Uh, I can give a tutorial for all the mods here if you guys are comfortable with that or desire that with your bike or similar zero motorcycles. So, LEDs, uh, I'd have to take the whole seat off to show you all the wiring for that. Same thing with the fast charger, I'd have to take off 
the battery pack and the side panels to show you how that's all wired up in there. Uh, this came with a pretty cool 120 uh, millimeter fan, like a PC fan. Basically, a lot of stuff here is easily replaceable by Amazon next day. Uh, most of the shit on here is next day because not only am I lazy, I am also impatient. It's a terrible combination of attributes. Um, so I started with a 120 PC fan that I replaced with the one it came with. That pulled a few more amps to see if I can keep it cool because the sucker gets hot when it's pumping out power. Uh, that didn't keep it as cool as I would like. I mean, it's got its own protections and all that, but I like things run cool because when you're running hot, of course, that's going to have a detrimental effect on the longevity of things. And the key thing for this bike is utility, in my opinion. Uh, then I went to a 140 weatherproof Noctua fan. Destroyed that one when I took it off-road. Um, there's been a lot of revisions for this subframe that I made, and it's still not done yet. I'm keeping this. I'm going to replace this truss, whatever you want to call it, that I bent up into it to keep it, to seat it where I want it to. And eventually uh, I'll give me a welder and I'll weld up some aluminum. None of this is permanently mounted to the to the bike itself to protect its resale value or if an event, anything happens and I have to take it to a dealership or whatever, I can remove all of this and it'll look just like a normal bike. 1772. Splits into two C14 cables. One is for this guy and all of this is wired up under the seat. And I have an extender because it's not a very long cable. With longer cables comes heat and resistance. Uh, I'll explain that more in what I'm talking about. Um, I guess I gotta do four videos. One specifically for the charger, the specifications, where you can get one, how to build the cables, so on and so forth. Um, none of this is really hard. Uh, you do need a soldering iron. And then, so one goes straight to this for the charger and one goes straight to the onboard charger which is fed through an extension. I'm comfortable with the extension because the onboard is only 750 watts and you probably pull through, pull that through a normal gaming PC. Uh, so that's how that works. And you pretty much just open that, plug it in. I've got one little cable for the 220 and then I keep the battery charger cable there. It takes less than a minute to do, super convenient. Uh, it's important to note that Zero does not offer this for any FX or FF, FXS, not even the new FFE, which is another reason why I think that bike's a fucking joke. If they're going to do a whole refresh, they should at least add, you know, a way for you to charge the bike faster than eight hours. No, charge times. There's a lot of talk about that. Uh, that'll be wrapped up into uh, the fourth video, third video, whenever I do one for the charger. The charge times from 0% are about an hour and 40 minutes, uh, and that's because uh, I don't charge it, fast charge it from zero. Uh, this thing is not smart, so it'll just dump amps into it. Um, I would need an Arduino board to, to comfortably do that. So I charge it up a couple for a couple minutes, and then once it gets up to like 10, 20%, then I plug this in, and it'll charge it up in an hour. So 20% to 100% is less than an hour, Zero to 20, it takes about an hour, 30, hour, 40 minutes. And that's just because, you know, keep the battery lasting longer. Uh, what else is there? You know, I think that's enough for right now. I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, it is, what day is it? It's Wednesday. I got to work tomorrow. And I still got to get down this hill and uh, do a little more filming. Pretty sure I encountered a legal immigrant earlier today. Actually, I think I encountered him right here. Or maybe it was a little further down. I told him where the city was. I don't give a fuck. Alright, signing off.